And welcome to the Houston Texans franchise rebuild. Here today, we have the series finale. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Please leave a like, comment down below what you thought of today's action, and don't forget to subscribe. As the Houston Texans are coming off a loss here in the AFC Championship game, losing pretty badly, actually, to the New York Jets 28 to 14. We have one more season to go through, one more year with this roster that we have constructed together. We played five seasons as a user, and this is our fifth season as Simi. And this is, again, the first time I've ever done this in a rebuild, and I would love any sort of feedback that you guys have for me down below. So we're entering into another offseason, the last offseason, so we're going all in on this roster. So when you first of all look at this roster is where can we improve? Of course, the number three wide receiver. You can make that argument, or do you stick with the youth that we have constructed? Do you want a true legitimate backup quarterback? Maybe not the most pressing need, but still. You got your running backs, you got your offensive line. Could look to bring in a new tight end for the number two spot. And then defensively, you know, of course you can get some defensive tackle depth, some pass rushing depth, and maybe you bring in a new corner. This is really the question mark is, where on this roster can we go out there and potentially trade for an impactful player? Because I think that's where a lot of this is going, th this could really determine a lot. So let's just first of all make the best lineup here. I mean, for starters, third receiver is definitely a positional group that we could go make a trade. Trade it because we have two first round picks, two second round picks, and we got some young players that we can trade. And this is definitely one spot on the roster that we can do it. And it's probably the only spot on the offense that would make a significant impact. You know, as we have, you know, our starting two wide receivers, our two t running backs, our starting tight end, and our starting line. So offensively, is kind of set. Defensively, though, it's kind of a different story. You know, yes, you know, we have two solid corners to potentially play the number three spot. Yes, we have um, Woodberg, Allen, and Edwards that can start at the defensive tackle spot or heck, even on the end or at that third linebacker spot, but it's still the third linebacker spot is probably a little less important. C. Wright could easily start there as the third guy, 100%. Could you argue in strong safety? Maybe, but I mean... Russell Goings is the 11th best strong safety in the league. I just don't see a team. I don't see us wanting to replace him. So in my opinion, it's the third corner or if we can get a number two corner, um, that's just better than Marcus Cook and Derek Stingley and a true defensive tackle that can come in here and be the guy that disrupts teams. 100%, I think those are really the three spots that if we wanted a massive, impactful player. But we're entering into free agency. Um, but let's first check out some retirements here. You know, Jabril Peppers have decided to retire after 14 years. And, you know, I don't think that there's going to be too many others. You know, there, there's, of course, big name players that are retiring, retiring like Marlon Humphrey. Um, you know, what's Debo Samuels, George Kittle. You know, some players that are staples in this franchise. Juju has retired. Same with Joey Bosa. We had Nick Bosa on the team for a handful of seasons. But of course, you know, not too many players of our own. Rashad White. This is probably the youngest player that I've seen um, that was drafted. Probably one of the first players I've ever seen that was drafted. BJ Hill, Josh McKinley. Another young player retiring. So a couple young players Tyler Huntley also has decided to retire. But what are we going to be doing here with our 10 players to negotiate $35 million? Not keeping Jack Rivers and just not Carl. We're not bringing back Kenny. No. Um, Tunsil, like I said, I would like to keep him. McBride, we're not bringing back. Um, same thing here with Montez Sweat. Um... 
Devon Bishop here. Um, you know, we brought him in just to be a depth. We'll let him test. Same thing here with Charlie. Patrick Wall will go and Levi Gibbs. So, I mean, I'm going to offer a one year, $5 million deal to um, Tunsil. And if he wants to come back, he can come back. Um, you know, I, I just don't see a purpose in not keeping Tunsil. So, a one year, actually, we'll make it a one year, $4.7 million. And Tunsil has decided to test free agency, not gonna tag him. I will offer him a one year deal in free agency, but right now, let's move to open free agency. And here we go, $35 million here in open free agency. And again, now we only have one spot that we can negotiate with. Okay, this is fantastic. But Patrick Sertain is out there. I mean, he could be that type of guy. You know, Peyton Morgan is out here with that 99 speed. John Pound, same thing. Isaiah Donald. Ooh, Kyler Murray. We have a couple good linemen. Dalton or uh, Walton Ash here. He could be that other big time defensive tackle that you could bring in more of a run stopper um but patrick Sertain, that is such a hard one especially because of the fact that we can only go after one free agent Dexter perry's back in free agency um uh, richard palmer's out here so he's going to be on the move um you know there's a couple of good quarterbacks out here that will most likely go somewhere not thinking about a running back third receiver so you know, we could bring in a guy like a John Pounds or a Morgan Payton. We could just go all in with our remaining cap on one of those two guys. And those would probably be the needle mover, as one would say. Um, tight end wouldn't do that for me. I want Tunsil to come back. Um, that is one thing that I definitely want to happen. Uh, for the rest of these guys, again, I'm just not seeing. I mean... Ash, probably not. No one here at linebacker or the other defensive end. Now, Antonio Bradshaw, he's a good player, but again, he's just not, just not the type of caliber player that I really want to go get. Jamal Dawson, no, I'm okay. Yeah, I really think that in this free agency class, it's us either going after one of these two wide receivers in pounds or Morgan Payton, or we bring in Patrick Sertain. Now, Sertain has an offer, and John Pounds, so let's see these guys. So John Pounds, what is he good at? So he's a slot receiver. He's not gonna, he, even with that great speed, he's not gonna beat you down the field. He's a little shorter of a receiver, has a little bit of an injury prone aspect to him. You know, he's kind of bounced around the league. He was a depth guy, and then there in Jacksonville, he really stepped up and he probably had his best year last year. So John Pounds should be in consideration. What about Morgan Payton here? Now he's more of a deep threat. Yeah, he can go get the ball down the field. I mean, neither one of those two guys is kind of like the caliber of receiver that we want. I think we go after Pastor Chetain. Give him this massive one-year contract. Um... You know, we can move some of this, you know, money into, um, what's it called? Into the signing bonus. So he can come here, be the guy, help out this secondary. Um, so Patrick Sertain, he's the one and only offer because that's the only offer I can make at this current juncture. So Patrick Sertain did not sign with the Houston Texans. Um... And now Morgan, he's going to the New York Giants. John Pound's going to the Colts. And I really did not have a backup plan in terms of someone else to target if it wasn't one of those two guys. Could try to bring back Richard Palmer, though. Um, okay. Let's look around the league. Let me look around the league and see if there's like any caliber player that I would want to go make a trade. And a deal has been made. We're trading away Kevin Ridley and Dion Woodberg and a first round pick next year for Elijah Curley. If you guys don't remember who Elijah Curley was, he was the speedster about seven seasons ago 
and he was one of my favorite receivers coming out of the draft. Now I'm training them both away, a starting linebacker and a starting defensive lineman in the next year's first round pick, just because next year we won't need to. So am I cheesing the system? Maybe a little bit. Um, but I'm moving off of two key defensive starters that will immediately make an impact for the Miami Dolphins as we get a number three wide receiver, a true legitimate number three guy. Curly comes in here with 99 speed, 98 acceleration, a true deep threat, and he can make plays across the board for your team. Um, coming off of two 1,000 yards campaigns, he's one of the best receivers, not making any money here and Miami gives them I give Miami two key defensive starters for them let me make sure that they are kind of set here so um who did I trade to the Miami Dolphins I don't remember um is the game not updated so okay Dion here we will flip him to the other side so then just to help them out here and Dion he was a first round pick that just never worked out for us he's a good player I like Dion a lot when we drafted him um but entering into year four Miami can now utilize him to the more more of his best ability and he can help out Miami's defense a little bit more and then you know Kevin Ridley here, he can play for their, their inside. He can move to inside for them. He has that He has that good speed. He has good enough coverage ability. So we'll help out Miami so that they don't not start either one of these two guys. But they got two starting caliber players. You know, I was trying to make a move for Von Temple. Was not working out in my favor. Um, I tried to make a move. You know, I tried. So... Let me show you guys. So I was trying to make a move here for Jairi. Just didn't want to happen. They didn't want to move off of him, um, even at the age of 34. And I thought that bringing in a guy like a Jairi could really help out this defense. It just wasn't happening. And then for the um, Raiders, uh, this is not the Raiders. The Raiders, I was trying to get Von Temple here. He's been in the franchise for a while now. And again, they, they just didn't want to move him. It was just way too much. It was more like I couldn't with the draft picks that we have. I would have had it to trade up in the first round. And then it was just way too much to go get Bon Temple. So instead, we're going to improve on the offensive side of the football and get us a true legitimate number three receiver. Now, with that being said, now we have that taken care of. We have... The offense is now complete. I think now we're going to probably end up trading away D'Angelo. Let him go to a roster and flourish there. Um, you know, you can argue that linebacker immediately becomes a need. Um, it kind of does. It kind of doesn't because I think Edwards, I'm more than happy to start Edwards there. But in reality, C. Wright will be moved to um, left outside linebacker for us. And he's going to just play there. So we kind of have already the guy to replace um kevin so linebackers are still in my opinion set safeties are set um you know i still think players that we could look to trade is you know either green or spain if we wanted to hell even edwards but i like edwards i think we'll keep him on the roster um so if we can make like another big move or heck, maybe we try to trade up in this draft class. Maybe that's what we do. Trying to make a big pick in the last draft class. So I'm going to be trading away Marcus Green and D'Angelo Washington and our 27th overall pick for Dion Jenkins here. We're going to go get ourselves a true legitimate number three corner and we're going to give ourselves a great player to have on this roster. Now, I tried to make the trade. Um, I tried to make the trade by adding something else instead of a player, um, but uh, just didn't. I wanted a draft pick. It didn't. They weren't having it. But Jenkins here, you know what? He's a superstar dev corner, zone cover corner. Terrible in man, but he's going to come out here and he's going to solidify our secondary. And this is going to allow us now to move. Um, Damian Spain here, who I think can potentially play safety for us. Uh, that probably be the only way he can get on the field. 
But now we have solidified our secondary. We solidified our receiving room. We are still going into this draft class with a first and two seconds. I think we're okay. We've made the necessary moves. I think the rest of the way, I'm gonna go out in free agency in the next period, bring in any depth that I want, and then we'll get into the draft. So we're kind of doing an interesting moves here. For the rest of our remaining cap and these targets that I have decided to go after, you should see some familiar names. And in reality, all of them should be. Richard Palmer, who was on the team for four years, we let him test and he's played very well and we want him to come back here and be the backup tight end. Of course, Tunsil has been on this team since day one. Carl Brooks, who we traded for in year three. Christopher Lockhart, who we traded for. I'm gonna try to bring him back. Emmett Olsen, who's been a backup. And then of course, Daniel Williams, who was our backup quarterback. So all old Houston Texans. I am trying to bring back here and Richard Palmer has now more interest, but we get Carl Brooks to come back. Christopher Lockhart, Emmett Olsen here and Daniel Williams. So unfortunately we will have to move, not bring back, um, What's his name? Richard Palmer. But you know what? We were returning some familiar faces, some on the defense, some on the offense. And if there's anyone else that I'm I'm going to look around and I'm going to continue trying to make some of these type of signings. I think it'll just be kind of cool to have players that I've drafted. I'm just not going to over buy anyone. So let me try to find five more players. OK, I think these will be the last players that I will be targeting just for depth purposes. We'll try to bring back Larry Young, who did start off as a free safety. I will move him back there. Um, if he signs, trying to bring back Brevin Jordan, Brock Morgan, Pat Vernon, and probably a name that you guys don't remember, but he was from the first draft class, Carl Finley, who I don't think has really played too much. He might be coming out of retirement, basically. Um, Brock Morgan and Larry Young have yet to accept. But we did bring back a two solid running backs that was on this team. Brevin Jordan, who's bounced around the league. Tunsil is back. And Brock Morgan has still yet to make his decision. But Larry Young is back. So we bring back some familiar faces for the shits and giggles to fill out the bottom of the roster. But now let's get to the draft. I just wanted to show you guys Carl Finley. He has not played in about six years. This will, he hasn't played in five years actually. So he played for us for a couple seasons and then we decided to trade him to the Green Bay Packers and you know, had a quality year, but didn't do anything after that. Um, he didn't, he's never scored a touchdown as a Houston Texan. Um, and he's back here in Houston as he will hopefully finish out his career. Actually, what round did I even draft Finley? I remember he was like a 70s something overall. Um, and we drafted him in the third round. I thought he was gonna be our backup running back for a while. And if you guys don't remember Pat Vernon, we traded for Pat um, from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you know, he played for us and he hasn't played in a very long time either. And his only scores was as a Houston Texan. So, you know, a couple, couple just fun players to just bring back in. Fifth year option here for Josh Taylor. Yeah, we're gonna give it to him. Don't really have to think about the cap situation. Um, but he's our starting offensive lineman, um, starting left tackle. So, you know, we're gonna get into this last draft class and we're gonna, tr we're gonna be making every single selection here, folks. So. You know, hopefully we can get some good players and some quality starters. And as we're entering into the last draft classes, we did re-sign Brock Morgan. He's back on the roster. He's an undrafted free agent receiver. What do we need? Um, offensively, not a lot. I mean, we got our receivers. We got our running backs. Um, we got everything that we want. We basically kind of can go best player available. Um, we got the team offensively. Defensively, kind of the same ordeal. Probably defensive tackle depth. It's basically just depth and taking the best player available across the board. We got the corners. We got this team to, in my opinion, the best possible spot. So, you know, let's get into this draft class. This is the last draft class of the franchise, and I am going to be making every single selection just because I kind of want to. 
Now, when I was looking at this draft class, it's a very underwhelming class. I do not think it's very good. Um, you know, there's three, four, five, all five quarterbacks are at the top. We don't need a quarterback, so... Uh, in terms of other positional groups, there's not a lot that, like, immediately just stands out to me. So, we're just gonna center our selections. We're just gonna have some fun. Here we go, the 29th overall pick. We had two first round picks. I decided to trade one of them away. We have in this draft, one second, two, uh, one first, two seconds, a four, a five, and a seven. So here with the first pick, well, the last pick ever in the first round, you know, could go after a safety if we really wanted to. I mean, if we're thinking about this from like, if the team was gonna continue on, I mean, safety theoretically would be in line technically um you know someone like uh Rashawn Cooks here who has hopefully solid I mean Rashawn Cooks is probably an option um and just for that start that future starter at safety uh Trevius uh Rice here 21 years old yeah no I, I would probably go with Cooks over him corner not really liking anything. What about what about the seven, six foot four corner who has B man coverage? Eh, he has run. He runs four four. So Brandon Silvers could be a solid target here. Um, linebacker, not something that I'm thinking about. I did take more of a look at the defensive tackles in this draft. Um, Max Ash here, 21 years old, B power moves, B tackle, very fast, strong. We drafted a defensive tackle last year. Um, do I just draft a defensive end? Um, because, you know, you guys all know me. I love my defensive ends. I can never have too much pass rush on my roster. Um, don't really like any of the guys on the top. I actually kind of like the selection of drafting Rishon Cooks here. So let's go with Cooks. Welcome to the team. And he has normal dev, of course he does. Normal dev, 91 speed, 91 acceleration. Good athlete. Just the development trade is unfortunate. As we're moving on now to the second round, I still think probably going heavily more on the defense is probably the direction that I want to go. Um, but here in the second round, you know, we got our safety. We could consider linebacker, of course, you know, you never can have too many linebackers or too many pass rushers. In terms of defensive tackles, you know, there's always a good D tackle. No one seems to be intriguing. No good defensive defensive ends. Just trying to see if there's any A's in a lot of these categories that kind of makes some sense here. At the top, a tight end. I don't really want to draft a tight end. Um, I mean, we technically could. Who did we bring in as our backup tight end? Brevin Jordan? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could just replace Jordan. I mean, here's the second fastest, Chris Sheriff. Solid tight end here. Running back, well, you never can have too many backs on a roster. Though, Parker Miles... Sneed? Ah, uh, no. I just don't think he's like... Kind of also looking at projections, too. Now, this could be a solid linebacker for with that A-zone coverage. Why not? Noble. Welcome to the team. Hidden Devs, 83 speed, 89 acceleration. You know, you can always find these good linebackers. We have another second round pick here coming up. Do I really know what I want to do with this second selection? Or the second round pick apps? No, I completely, I don't. Um, you know, we could just take a shot at one of these wide receivers. Avery Johnson here, who's six foot three, 21 years old, four four speed, elite jumping. So let's draft one of these receivers. Um, how many receivers do we have? Five on the depth chart. Um, Jalen Hades here. Uh, what about this guy? Yeah, he's slower. I do like the other receiver we would like. A, uh, I do like Johnson. He looks interesting. How about Hannah here? Miles Hannah. What a receiver. He can run. Why not? Come to the roster. 99 speed hidden development. Miles can run for miles. 
97 acceleration, 88 jumping, another hidden development player. Let's go. So we've made it now to the fourth round here. You know, we're making some good selections. You know, what else do we need in terms of depth? Looking across the team, we could use an offensive lineman that is on the table. Defensive end um, is on the table. Same thing with a linebacker. Let's try to draft an offensive lineman just to kind of bolster that up a little bit. Any A's? I see an A in terms of that. A couple B's here. Who is blue? We could draft a blue guy. Why not? Um, could draft a center. Don't really need a center. Looking at tackle and right guard, potentially. I mean, we can always just move the player. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, let's draft Blue. Where was Blue? What? What? Where, where was he? Blue, welcome to the team. 21 years old, six foot seven. Not the strongest, but Blue. I like his name. Welcome to the team. 77 strength. Yeah, you know what? That's a classic bust on my end. You know, when when you decide to draft a player by his name. Not the strongest, but that's okay. Um, so let's, as we enter now into the fifth round, we have three more selections here. Could go, we already drafted a safety. Could go corner if we really desperately needed to. Gregory, actually this guy has B zone coverage. What's his speed at? Eh, not really the fastest. He probably wouldn't be, I mean, he would be a quality special teamer. What about this guy? Dropped another Hana player. Great speed, okay. DeAndre Hana here. Welcome to the roster. 85 speed, normal development, solid player. Okay, as we're now moving into the sixth round, we've drafted a couple linebackers. We've helped out this team the best that we possibly can. Considering drafting a quarterback just to have another quarterback on the roster. Um, you know, we got Larry Barber here. 21 years old, A ball vision. It's a terrible speed though. Drafted a receiver already. Could look to draft another offensive lineman. How about this guy? 22, 21 years old, six foot two. Claiborne, how strong is he? He's strong, yeah, let's draft him. Welcome to the team, 85 strength. Could be a solid depth player. And with the final selection that I will ever make here in the Houston Texans franchise rebuild, just how we started with a quarterback, we will end with a quarterback. And who the heck do I want to draft here? Um, You know, kind of just want to take a flyer on someone. Jason Crockers sees across the board, 21 years old, he has Great throw power elite. Jason Crockers is the final selection. 89 throw power, 82 acceleration, normal dev. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the final draft class here in the Houston Texans rebuild. As we're now entering into the last season, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? Of course, let me know down below what I could have done better. But I mean, hey, we made the most out of our selections here, drafting a lot of quality players. Rayshon Cooks here, normal dev, hybrid, the safety. He can do it all for you. I mean, he has solid hit power, solid coverage across the board. He would be an excellent future starter for us. Noble here, quality, quality linebacker. Can do a little bit of everything, though not the premier speed, but you know what, a quality linebacker. Miles Hanna here. 69 overall, nice. He can get down the field, he can burn you. We're gonna beat you guys with speed this season. Love that for us, Blue. Demirius Blue, who I just literally drafted for his name. Um, coming in with 81 strength, but it was really 77. Not the strongest, probably not a great player. And then Anna here, who is another linebacker, more of a run stopper, but hey, can never have Bad, not a bad special teamer. And then finally, we got Claiborne here, who's a good pass pro. Very solid depth. And then just like we started off in this franchise, we drafted a quarterback, and now we will end with a quarterback. And actually, around the board, he actually has solid passing ratings. I know the 69, he has down morale, 
but it's 73 short, 71 um, for both medium and deep. That's not bad at all. He can't really run. He's a complete just um he's just a complete pocket passer, but he's he's solid. And as this draft class, as you guys can see, the best player is Chet Spillman here, who we probably had a chance to draft a couple times. But Chad was the best player at 78. Very underwhelming draft class. We still got one of the better players in the class, but overall, happy with it. Let's get into year number 10. Well, this will be the roster here. Mason Pryor and company is trying to get us back to the postseason, trying to get us back to the promised land, the Super Bowl one last time here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give Tunsil back his captain patch here. But this will be the offense here. As we brought in Elijah Curley from the Miami Dolphins, he's going to be the number three wide receiver. We have talent across the board. We also brought back some familiar faces to this team. And across the board, we have an elite offensive line, elite playmakers across the board, a defense that we brought in Carl Brooks. He's going to be playing in the role that Edwards was playing, but he's going to be playing as well on in the in the um, when we go to a when we go into our uh, nickel um, packages here. We're going to get Allen involved as well. We're going to give these three defensive linemen as much involvement as possible. But we also brought in Dion Jenkins here from the uh, Atlanta Falcons. We brought back Larry Young, Christopher Lockhart. But this team has been constructed through the years. We have familiar faces back on the roster. We have players from that have been here this entire time, like Derek Stingley, Jalen Petrie, and Christian Harris, who was part of the team from the very beginning. You flip it over to the offense. It's, of course, Damian Pierce and Nico Collins with Tunsil, who is now a backup. Overall, this team has grown. This team has changed. And after five years of me playing and five years of me simulating, this will be it. We will sim now to the playoffs. I will not know what the heck happens. It's been an amazing ride here in the Texans franchise. Honestly, one of my favorite rebuilds out of all of them. This is much slower than I fucking expected it to be. But this has been honestly one of my favorite rebuilds. Guys, please leave a like. Comment down below what you thought of this rebuild. Let me know down below what team you want me to rebuild in Madden 24. But you know... This was honestly between this one, the Texan, the Texans, the Jets and the Falcons. This was honestly one of my favorites between the three of them. I, I don't know which one is truly my favorite, but I mean, I know for me as a content creator and giving you guys the best content that I possibly can at this current moment in time, I'm still growing. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to learn. Um, I definitely think from those two previous rebuilds, this is absolutely my best in terms of presentation, in terms of storytelling, in terms of everything and everything for you guys. And honestly, it's been so much fun doing this. I always looked forward to making these episodes. It was a very slow start to get this series going underway. And then once we hit it, we hit the ball rolling. We went fast. Then it had a little bit more of a slower. I'm hoping for the next one, we kind of hit the ground going we can go through multiple seasons not just five or six i hope we can play more years than we typically do um but yeah guys honestly this was a blast we did win a super bowl with this team we can check that marker off but just like in the other two rebuilds we never got back can we get back there with this roster can we do it we only have a couple more games to go, and this has been such a long intro, and I have been dragging it out here. But can we do it, ladies and gentlemen? We have two more games to go with the Houston Texans franchise rebuild. My goodness, I will never get tired of saying my intro. 
Again, guys, leave a like, comment down below what you thought. Because the Houston Texans went 14 and 3. We are currently the number one seed. We have done it. We are in the AFC. We are the number one seed. We have done this a couple times here. Oh my goodness, we've done it again. We brought back players from all the way back from the first draft class. All of you guys just auto upgrade i don't care oh my what season did we have here in year number 10 mason Pryor, almost 5,000 passing yards 50 touchdowns to seven interceptions sacks 33 times with a 69 completion percentage nice Oh my, Damian Pierce, 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns. George Howard added 4-4-4 with five touchdowns. Mason Pryor also had five rushing touchdowns, so he had 55 touchdowns in total. Nico Collins, 81 catches, 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. Elijah Curley, who was one of my favorite receivers five seasons ago, almost 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. Paul Wilkerson added five or eight and eight. Damian Pierce also added seven rushing touchdowns with 700 yards on the ground. He had a total of over 1,200 yards from scrimmage. With Caleb here, who added 600 yards through his own right with six touchdowns. The offensive line played fantastically. Josh Taylor allowed the most sacks, but everyone else played fantastic here for this line. In terms of this defense here, no one over 100 tackles. We probably didn't need to be. Um, Steven Dalton had 16 tackles for loss. David Elliott, 12. Dwight Pianzo, 11. Raymond a Edwards here with 11, who we traded for a year ago. Dalton added 13 sacks. He was part of the first ever draft class, and he has developed nicely for us. You know, he was a rotational edge rusher for his first few years. Then he got the opportunities and he played a lot of downs. And ever since then, he has been a very, very much of a capable starter. Never been to a Pro Bowl, never been to anything, but he's been fantastic. Dwight Pianzo, he's been hot and cold throughout his career. But honestly, one of my favorite players to user when I was usering him. Then it took him a while, but he finally came on his own through the simulation. He has made the Pro Bowl in his career. And then interceptions. Christian Harris leads us with three. Marcus Cook is tied with him with three. And plenty of other players got involved as well. We had the number two ranked offense here with the number three ranked defense. Your MVP is Robbie Edmond here from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mason Pryor was the runner up. Blake Rivers, coach of the year. Jonathan Taylor, offensive player of the year with Damian Pierce, number three. Mason Pryor, number four, and no one else. Defensive player of the year, we have no candidates. Offensive rookie of the year, we shouldn't have anyone. Defensive rookie of the year, we probably don't have anyone either. Best quarterback is Mason Pryor, and that is definite. Damian Pierce, third best running back in the league. Best receiver, where is Nico Collins? He's number five. Best offensive lineman, Scott Washington was number two. Highest we've ever seen a lineman on our team. We have not had too many players represent. Steven Dalton was top 10 in terms of defensive lineman. No one here for the linebacker spot. I don't think we're gonna have a safety or a corner. And they did not give our kicker, Matt Gay, until number nine. So we had this runner up to the MVP and here we go. We're back in the postseason, ladies and gentlemen. We have one more run to be made here. Can we do it? And I just looked at our division. Everyone won in our division, except for the Indianapolis Colts. But we play against the Tennessee Titans. This is our first meeting. Uh, well, not the first meeting. This has been this has been a rivalry throughout this entire franchise. Do they send us home? Do I just sit here and end the video now? Who knows? And we do. We lost. God fucking damn it. <laughs> we had the one of the best teams that we've ever constructed. And it's a one and done. After going 14 and 3, we're one and done. 
that's disappointment. To say the least, that's just disappointment. <laughs> we didn't show up. And okay. Um, okay then. Well, you know what? I was hyped and now I'm no longer hyped. Um, let's go through some career stats here for the team. This was the point. So Mason Pryor, less than fourth, 40K passing yards, 30, 300 touchdowns, 123 touch or interceptions, excuse me. Um, fantastic career. Honestly, Pryor is, you know, give it a few more seasons and, you know, eventually he will um, probably end up becoming one of the best quarterbacks of all time, I would assume. Uh, we, we will look at, like, the record book as well. Damian Pierce, 14K rushing, almost 15K with 148 touchdowns. Oh my goodness, he scored a ton with this roster here. A true legitimate 99 overall, the best back in the league. Oh my goodness. Nico Collins, same thing. Holy crap, with 131 touchdowns. You know, Nico Collins, and also a true 99 overall. Also the best receiver in the league. You know, Nico Collins started off as a 73 overall or something like that. And in his in our first year, went over 2,000 yards, 18 touchdowns. He broke out. He continued to break out. And he never not. You know, he had a couple down years, and then he really started to pick it back up. And as he's entering into his 10th season, or is it 11th season, excuse me. You know, it's one of the best. And Paul Wilkerson, same thing, almost 10,000 receiving yards, 84 touchdowns, very good. Damian Pierce added 3,000 yards and 21 touchdowns on the ground. And you know, we don't really have someone else that can like shine, really, but that's okay. Offensive line played like the offensive line. Christian Harris with 12, Hundred tackles. Oh my goodness. Nova not far behind. Jalen Petrie, who's played throughout his entire career here. Derek Stingley, same thing. Oh my goodness. We see our players and they make a ton of plays. Active lead see or active sack leader is 65 here with Steven Dalton. Dwight Pianza with 58. David Elliott who honestly, I thought I was going to give up on Elliot here. You know, Elliot was a player that we drafted very early or early on in this franchise, and I really did not think he was going to produce. He dealt with injuries, kind of became a role player, got the opportunities. I decided to extend him here, and, you know, he's been a quality, quality contributor. Um, 100% here. And then you throw it all over to these corners, you know, Derek Singley with 35, you know, he started off his career red hot. His rookie season, um, how many interceptions did he have? He had nine. And then he never found that stride again until um, a few years in, then he got eight, and then he's never really gotten back to that point, but he's had two massive seasons. He's always been a shutdown corner for us. Love having Derek Stingley on this roster. Um, you know, Marcus Cook, who we traded up for, who's had a fantastic career as well. You know, he's never been that ball hawk, but, you know, he had two years with four interceptions, and then he's kind of dropped off, then catches some footballs. He sometimes doesn't, but he's always been on this team. You know, Jalen Petrie, he's been always a solid, solid player. Um... Any other standout players on the current roster? No, not really. Kicker Matt Gay, he's done most of his damage here as a Houston Texan. I don't remember exactly when we got um, him. Has he been on this team? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's been on this team basically his entire career. Um, we got him and he kept him and we kept him for as long as he possibly can he had really a bad season this year i probably should have looked to replace him but matt gay he is one of the best and then randy moore who's been an excellent player let's look around the league patrick mahomes oh my so where does mason Pryor kind of line up here i mean Pryor is up there he's one of the better quarterbacks that has ever been drafted you know, Robbie Edmonds, he's just playing in the Tampa Bay playbook. 
Um, my goodness. Patrick Mahomes, elite. I don't think that we will see. I mean, he's up here. Yeah, but he might be up there in their interceptions. You know, I definitely helped out with that. And I did. Yep. Rushing yards here. Damian Pierce, if he continues to play at the high level, he would make right around Derrick Henry area. Um, and 100 and... And he's up there. He's in the top five here in terms of rushing yard, or rushing touchdowns, excuse me. Receiving yards, Nico Collins is up there. He's number four. And he's been a dominant, dominant force for, for us and around the league. He leads the league in all active receivers and touchdowns. And I don't really think that there would be another wide receiver that's out here that um, we've drafted, that we've let go. You know, um, I just don't think so i mean there's probably players out there that i will go back and just look at just for my craziness gino duvall he's turned out to be a quality receiver i gave up on him um maybe i shouldn't have richard palmer he's a good he's been a great contributor uh let's flip it over here to the defense i think we have to do it like this the afc tackle leader uh, don't see any and here comes Christian Harris okay Max Crosby is the league right now the currently Lear and tackles for loss I don't think we'll have anyone here um and no we don't in terms of sacks yeah we don't have any one of the hundreds we have you know in the 65s but we might have it with interceptions that we do here with Derek Stingley so you know let's flip it over here to the NFC um Trayvon Diggs here with 42. I remember when he made the move over. A lot of big time playmakers here. You know, here's Greedy Williams, who's bounced around, it looks like. And he was a great player for us. Got the development trade, couldn't re sign him. He was one of my favorites. You know, we took the flyer on him. In terms of sacks, Nick Bosa, we had it to trade away. And Nick Bosa at the age of 33. You know, he's played the last now four years here as a New York Giant. Broke the sack record, it looks like, and he's been excellent. He was excellent for us for four years. You know, he was always an 18 sack guy. He hit the 11, he kind of, it kind of brought up questions in my eyes. And that's why we ended up tagging and trading him here to the New York Giants. And he's had a fantastic career. Um, Now let's look at the... NFL record book Tom Brady of course we're just looking for any Houston Texans so yeah right now we would probably need to go a little deeper into franchise um, for any of these passing stuff so for Mason Pryor it's just not going to be here though we should potentially no we don't yeah, so uh, Damian Pierce is yet to make this list, but I think he would get into this list because players like Ezekiel Elliott, McCaffrey, and I don't think Joe Mixon is playing anymore. So I think, I mean, simulating another season, he would be in there. In terms of rushing touchdowns, give it a few more years and he would probably make it in here as well. And now receiving yards. No, he, he gave him another few years, and I think Nico Collins would get into this list as well. Um, but he's nowhere to be found. In terms of receiving touchdowns, we do though see Nico Collins 131. He now players like Chris Carter here, plenty of other superstars, and plenty of other talented players in terms of catches. I don't think he will be up in this list. Defensive sacks, Miles Garrett is now the new guy. Here's Nick Bosa. No one for us. Interceptions, it's always hard to get on this list. Same thing here for passing yards. Okay, the last thing I'm going to look at here is the legendary in, in terms of um, Hall of Famer. So right now, currently, you know, with one Super Bowl, three yearly awards, you know, we, we as the user is the number three in this game i guess but let's look at all let's look at well can i look at user can i do that i don't know um no okay active patrick mahomes well okay let's go team that's what it, that's what i want to look at 
Okay, so Nico Collins right now. Right now he has the most legendary points here and he deserves it. Same thing here with Christian Harris, Damian Pierce, Mason Pryor, here's Nova. Or Nava, probably that's been probably how I should have been pronouncing it. What seasons? Career, current season. What the fuck? What does that even mean? Who knows? Um, but you know, you guys get to see these guys are probably some of these guys will probably become Hall of Famers. Elliot's up on this list as well. Marcus Cook is there too. Jalen Petrie. A lot of the guys that have been around, a lot of the staples, a lot of the guys that honestly have been around the league for a long, long time. And David Elliott actually just barely makes into this list here. Um, he's actually the last guy here. Do you have a random punter? Good for him. Um, let's just go through this list and let's just see any players that, you know, maybe we don't really kind of like, like Robbie here, you know, best quarterback that I was, that was drafted. Anyone else just looking for the best players that were drafted in this franchise that um, so here's Von Temple never won a Super Bowl. I've never been to a championship. He's been one of the best defensive tackles. I was drafted, you know, so far not seen too many. Here's Mason Pryor. Here's the best tight end. Steven Martinez. He's played for Tampa Bay. Uh, he's been an excellent tight end for them. Um, I'm looking if there's any like any players that we've let go. Here's Ellis. Um, who's been a great off-ball linebacker for Seattle. A lot of these guys have been around the this league. Here is Ben Daniels, who's, who came down hopping, popping as a Saint. Um, Quentin Dillon, or DeAndre Dillon, who's been an excellent tight end for them. Yeah, there's plenty of great, talented players here. I'm trying to find if there's like anyone else. Here's Luke Gordon, who won the Super Bowl as a rookie. My goodness, this was a fun, fun franchise. One of my favorites that I've done. It's, you know, it's been a while since I've actually sat down and decided to um, rebuild a team and then kind of go deep into franchise, you know. And the last couple Maddens, I, with you guys especially, you know, I've done the four years and I really don't play the game. And, you know, this is a game that I typically, here's Richard Palmer. He's up on this list. He's in the top 200. Um, here's Aaron Lawrence, who's now an Arizona Cardinal. Uh, but yeah, here's Grady Williams. We see a lot of our players that we've drafted and put to a uh, green yard here, who's bounced around, but he's been an excellent player. Um, you know, but I, I love doing these franchises for you guys. I love doing this in general. Um, some of my favorite content, here's Blake Rivers. Last year's, uh, or last, um, the Atlanta Falcons quarterback. But guys, that is the Houston Texans rebuild. Please leave a like. Comment down below what you thought. Let me know down below what you thought of this franchise. It was a ton of fun making this rebuild. I want to sit here and say thank you to every single one of you. This has probably been my most successful rebuild, both for content purposes, both for the channel and for me having a lot of fun with it. You know, the channel has grown significantly. Here are the players now in terms of development traits and everything. But guys, please leave a like, comment down below what you thought, and don't forget to subscribe. And that was the Houston Texans franchise rebuild. Have a great day.